So let's jump into Stephen O'Donnell. I was sent this uh, this video, and I have not seen it before, so we'll see what happens here. Let's, everything's full volume, yeah. I'm gonna kill my side chain. There we go, and let's go. Oh, it's fast. <laughs> All right, and we're skipping. Um, we'll watch through. We'll watch through, but I would have been skipping through by now. Please make your way to the first test area. Make your way up the stairs and jump on the following platforms to the next test area. We are sure you will do fine. Halfway through right now. Oh, it's, this is long. <laughs> this is a long read. I'm skipping. I'm doing it. It's too long, man. And by the way, is Steven here right now? He said on Twitter he'd join us, but I'm not sure if I've seen him on chat. Uh, and I get the impression he's not in North America also. I'm not sure about that, but I, I, I have the impression. Um, so we'll see here. <laughs> All right, cheers, Timmy. Thanks a lot, man. I'll see you around. Whoa. Rouge-like. Yo, I know this game. Skipping again. Twinge. All right, that bookend, and we're done. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Stephen. We are done. Okay, so let's jump back into this guy here. Uh, let's see. We've got this is a long ass reel, yo. 
so long. So Dan says that coin sound drives me crazy. Yes, I can tell you why. Uh, I thought the same thing. <clears throat> um, let's go through point by point here. Also, this says there's a website. Is it on your description? Because that's annoying to type in. There is no description here. Stephen O'Donnell, although you did do it kind of at a, yeah, you did it like today. So I think you uploaded this just for me. So I can, I can let that one go, but I don't want to type this in, man. I'm going to, but I don't want to. Stephen O'Donnell audio engineer dot wordpress dot com. That is a obnoxious <laughs> URL to type in manually. Uh, okay, let's have a look at this website too, because I'm going. If you if you have your site here, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. I'm totally going to. And then here, this is Stephen O'Donnell. This is a twelve? I guess twelve, right? This is a dangerous font to use, man. Holy. So. Are you seeing this right now? We've got Stephen O'Donnell and then 12. Yeah, this this one looks just like an L. I assume it's 12. I, I'm assuming the, the kerning is different, right? But, oh man, don't do this. Pick a font that has d different looking ones and L's. <laughs> That's scary. It's scary. You're going to have bounce backs on emails. Basically, don't, okay, so like Nat says, don't make people do things they don't want to do. Because usually it means they won't do it. Uh, he's he's 12 or level 2, yes, perhaps. Um, yeah, so do things like have a link in the description. Like if, if I can like have two clicks and get there, then I'm way happier than having to type this into the, into the URL field. All right? Um... Yeah, so I don't think Steven's here right now, but hopefully he'll see the VODs. I'm, I'm going to talk to you like you're here, Steven, even though you're not. I'm, I'm going to address you personally, because I know you said you wanted to watch it. So this is fine and good. It's a really quick bookend, and we're done. It's like three seconds. Cool. Disclaimer? I don't want a disclaimer, man. This is And also, this, is, this flew by. It was like two seconds, and gone. So I don't want to just... Uh, this shouldn't be necessary. So, all audio created in this show reel is original and or created from legally obtained sources. I should be able to assume that. Any copyrighted content has been used solely for demonstration purposes only and credit has been given to the original sources. Great. Don't put this here. Um, I think this kind of thing could be, like, so Twinge says, this kind of thing could be in the, uh, the video description. It's not relevant enough to be in this position. And the thing is, all this information can be conveyed on title cards on each video. It doesn't need to be here. So I'm going to go press play here. I will show you. These are great. Look at this. Velocity 2X audio redesign. There you go. The fact you said audio redesign means you didn't need to have that disclaimer there. Music, S of X, fully post-production, credit, feature lab. Oh, that's the... Uh, the developer. This is a cool game, by the way. Cool game. Um, all right, so that's fine, but like post production, if it's a redesign, it's not really post production. I mean, you can just say music SFX, and you don't need to have Foley in post production unless you actually did record yourself doing things in Foley. Maybe you did, uh, in, which, in which case, that's pretty cool. But like, yeah, it's a lot to look at. I think you could have make real talk earlier. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Tom, I know there's a lot of UK friends here. Thanks a lot for ha hanging out the late night, yo. Uh, we've got... Oh, this is this is so wordy. It's, just make it more efficient, more more uh, to the point, man. So we're going in here. So we're, we're still talking presentation only. Presentation only. I could talk about more things here, but I'm all, not going to yet. Presentation. Four minutes, 27 seconds is so goddamn long. Pull it back. Have 10 seconds of this. Move on. You have a lot of good stuff to show. Just slam through it. Slam through it. Um, I find splitting the fully post-production tag a bit odd. Yeah, I find that it's, it's. I usually consider that part of SFX when I'm doing games. Totally, and the fact that it's a redesign means you weren't involved in production. So post-production is kind of a strange thing to say. Uh, Four twenty seven super death. Yes, I'm skipping ahead. I'm skipping. Um, this is so long. Okay, so next one we've got next guy. So 40 seconds of this, ugh, it's too much. Do 10, next. Jimmy Divided, 
Best Game Award. Best Game Award in the world? <laughs> like, I, this doesn't mean anything to me. Like, is it a student project? Or was it a Game Jam project and it won an award for it? Uh, like, if it's award winning, that's cool to say, but in a demo reel, it's not really relevant. Um, you could you could put like, because the thing is, this this isn't okay. How do I phrase this? This including this in a demo reel has absolutely no relevance to the other games that were in the same thing this was in. I, I still have no idea what it was in, but we'll call it. I'm gonna assume it was a student project or a game jam game, and as a result, it won something in that subset of projects. Yes? So the problem with this is if you look down here at our friend Distinction, that subset of projects has no bearing on the rest of the industry. So if you ship the game uh, and you win an award, like for example, Rich Vreeland won Best Audio at the IGF for his work on Mini Metro. That shit is relevant because that's the entire industry at large. That's way, way more relevant than Best Game Team Award, okay? Because A, A, this doesn't mean anything by itself, but B, if it's anything b below like an industry-recognized award, then it's not really even relevant as far as including in here. So I think you just have Jimmy Divided put in parentheses what it was, like Game Jam or Student Project or whatever, and then this is good, Music and SFX, that's, that's great. So carrying on, this is starting at 45-ish, goes until... Facility. Goes until 125. Jeez, yeah, super long again. 10 seconds is all you need. So we have Honors Project now. This is music, SFX, dialogue, implementation, and design. That is awesome. That's so cool. I'm glad you're doing th this kind of thing also. Because these games, a redesign and a student project, game jam project, into this, like this surprised me that this popped in here, that you're doing like UDK4. That's really, really cool. So good for you. Uh, this next part, um, meh, a visual storybook, music and SFX, credit Thunderstone books, available on Google Play. Um, this, available on Google Play, like, uh, I would put in parentheses here, like, um, Google Play, to be like, this is where it was released, and I think that's definitely more relevant than like this, because this has not been, <laughs> this card has been absent every other, uh, title card. So, okay. Apologies. So Matt is asking, Honors Project, from where? Very good point. I missed that. Thank you. Very good point. Is this a downloadable demo? Was it his Game Jam game? Was it a student project? And, you know, Barney loves his Unreal stuff. Totally. There you go. UK represent and Unreal represent, right? So this should say also where this is from. If it's a Game Jam thing, if it's a student project, if it's, like, a shipped game. I have no idea. Maybe it's shipped. I, I have no way of knowing this. And if it's shipped, that's really good information to have. Super good. Uh, okay, so the ideal way to think about Reels is that your Reel makes the viewer's life easier because they've already cared enough to click your link or whatever, which is a huge hurdle. Yes, so it should be, here's a minute long, this is all you need to know, and just make everything as easy as possible to understand with all the information you need to know and nothing more. Just be very, very concise. We'll jump into the next part. Storybook, cool, this goes on a long time. Cut it down. Next up, Natura, Guardian of the Forest. Again, what is this? Did this ship? Is it a student project? Is it a, is it a game jam game? Um, I have no idea. It's pretty. Maybe it's shipped. Who knows? Music and SFX. Did you do the game? Uh, I. This means you did. I'm assuming you worked on it and didn't do a redesign, seeing as you said redesign over here. Um, I'm assuming that these ones mean you, you worked on them. Uh, this, again, is super long. Cut it down to 10 seconds. You're done. This game, I don't... Feel like I've seen this game before. Uh, also, I'm assuming it's 2D rogue-like, not rouge-like. So that's the little area you want to correct. Uh, credit Unity Technologies. Oh, is this like the one that's available? Is that why I know it? That might be why. This might be the one that's like available um, thanks to like care of Unity, because I know I've seen this image before. So you did music, SFX implementation. Um, audio redesign, so I guess you took the thing that Unity makes available and did the sound for it. Yeah, that, this could be more concise also as far as saying what this is. And it's probably too long, again. And the last thing, Swing Ninja, audio redesign. Um, 
Epic Games and UDK4. I, this might also be a publicly available thing. I'm not, I'm not aware of it, but maybe it is. And you did music, SFX, and implementation. That's awesome. Good for you. And I think that's it. Last bit is real quick. So the bookend, thanks for watching. This should have this information again. Here you go. Because if I've watched your reel through, I mean, once it's a minute long, mind you, if I watched it through and I'm like, this kid's sick. Who is this? Then I'll probably want to see this information again and remind me that this is who I just finished watching. The thanks is a nice touch, nice gesture, but having also, by the way, this was Stephen O'Donnell is really, really important as Matt Esk is uh, reflecting as well in the chat. So, hey, what's up, uh, Chris? Good to see you. Um, okay, cool. Good to go. Uh, annotated with links. That's an idea if it's on YouTube. Yeah, I, I don't really care personally about annotations for links, um, mainly because I go to the site. Here's the site, by the way. Here it is. We'll zoom in. All right. Uh, here's the things. The effects of show reel okay th this is good first thing you see is a show reel that's definitely a good thing um this is a bit crazy i don't know what i'm looking at here like is contact as important as like i don't know what playlist is at that point but i would organize things a bit differently than this to be like uh music sound design and contact or something like th that's this is galaxia is not nearly as, as it is not on the same level of importance as contacting you, that's for sure. So Brad Dyke is a very good point, and I thought about that too. Uh, not 100% clear whether redesign uses redesign uses engine tools and middleware or if it's done linearly. What he means is did you capture gameplay and design the sound of that on a timeline, or did you put the things into Unity or into UDK4 and allow them to play back in-game and therefore capture the playback of the sounds you've implemented? That kind of thing would be very helpful to put in there as well. Uh, as one of them is way more relevant in terms of hiring than the other. Yeah. <clears throat> and so personally, I turn off annotations all the time. I hate them. So I wouldn't even see them. Uh, okay. So I'm an audio engineer that specializes in sound design and music production. I have a strong interest in sound design music throughout all media, such as games, music, etc. Um, you have interest. Hey, this is weird, man. You have an interest in music throughout media like music? Kind of weird. I am a graduate of BA uh, Creative Sound. I know, yo, I, I actually contacted, contacted them and told them, told them about Real Talk. Is that how you knew? Did you hear from your school? Because I totally emailed your school and said, this is a thing we've done. I'd be very interested to know if that's how you found out about us, Steven. So hit, hit me up on Twitter, okay? This university has an impressive reputation in producing industry professionals across all, all disciplines. Uh, okay, I don't really care. I'll, I'll be the judge of that, you know? Um, also, you misspelled university. Univer university. Um, we we always put out typos on Real Talk, and it's not super relevant to your audio work, obviously. But it's a small detail, and as soon as you have details like this, that or or like the you know I like music through media's like media like music, um, things like that make me wonder how deep that lack of attention to detail goes, and. If, you know, if this is here, I'm like, oh, well, you're not double checking this. So I can assume you're not double checking your work also. Maybe you do double check your work, but this is telling me you don't. And I don't know you, right? So this kind of thing, it's very important to convey exactly what you want me to know about you and nothing else. Don't let me make assumptions, man. Throw out commitments in education work, et cetera. Approach these tasks in a professional manner with high quality audio production at all times. I have experienced the following audio disciplines. Great. Um... This is fine, okay. Equipment, uh, Logic, Pro Tools, MIDI keyboard. I don't really care about your gear so much, but I don't know, maybe gear guys do. Um, services, high standard. Yeah, you're saying high standard a lot. Professional, standard, high standard, high quality. Like this, this kind of stuff is, I don't know, I feel like it's being too wordy because it, it's, if you see a reel and your reel conveys this, then I'm gonna know, you know. It's kind of uh, it's a bit it's a bit superfluous to say that because I will be the judge of that. Like I will watch your stuff and say, "Cool, this is good." 
And yeah, so Matt says, that's not an impressive gear list to me, so I don't care. Yeah, this is, unless you're like, a, have a crazy, crazy list of analog synths that you want to share with someone who would be like, oh, sick, this guy likes synths, so cool. Like, Logic and Pro Tools are not that interesting, and you have two things that are a mic and a keyboard. It's probably not even that interesting. Um, <laughs> Matt, even my gear, if I listed it out, wouldn't interest me. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Uh, okay, so one comment. Who commented? What a liar. There's no comment. All right, so this is fine. Uh, what do these things go to, though? Different. Oh, okay, so more information on the things. Yeah, yeah, like I would put all these things in one page, man. Have like a my work page and then put all the things there with this, with this additional information. It's fine to have the additional information and probably good. But uh, I think this is probably presented strangely. I would put all these things like this and this and this and all the things you worked on in one section because this is a lot to look at at once. It's too much. Too much. Let's talk about material selection, shall we? Uh, I'm going to close this page now because it's not relevant to me so much. So material selection. We've got the first thing. Um, a redesign. Cool. Great. Next is... A game jam thing, Rainbow Game Jam, great, uh, fine, something you actually worked on, cool. This thing, is there is there additional little subtext here? See, so here's here's what happened. So there you go. This is, we're now experiencing what happened because I skipped through. If you have additional stuff like this game was made as part of the game jam, like that's it's too wordy. This little scrolling text thing. I'm skipping through, and therefore I missed this, and therefore I don't know what you did. So that's not that's not good at all. So let's uh, let's see here. Um, this is cool. Unreal is sick. If you did this in in implementation in UDK four, then that is badass, and that's fantastic. Good for you to, for including this, and good for you, good for you for doing it. And a Visual Storybook, kind of something different. Pretty cool. It's a, it's different than the game stuff so far. It shows your versatile. That's really cool too. And this, again, it looks, it looks massively different than your other titles. So if you worked on this, then that's great, again. And finally, the last one, these two Unity things, it shows that you are reaching out and doing things of your own volition, and that's great, too. So overall, material selection is fantastic. It's very, very good. There's a lot, a lot of variety, and things you redid and things you've done, like Matt says. Uh, so if So he says now, if you're showing off school stuff, so if these are things you did in school, then he'd want to see out of school stuff too. I don't know the, uh, what's it called, Aberté, right? I don't know their curriculum very well, or at all, really. So I wouldn't know which of these things you did in and out. So for example, the <laughs> Dan, settle down. So for example, this, uh, this like game jam thing, I'm assuming you didn't do in school, and that's a good thing. So on to content quality. Let's talk about these coin sounds, shall we? So the coin sounds in the Unity project, yo, swing ninja. Let's listen to these coin sounds, shall we? Let's, let's do it. I'm popping in. That's pretty brutal. So the thing about pickups is you should feel great about picking these things up, you know? Any pickups, any anything that you want to reward the player for doing, and say yes, you're doing that. You're doing a good thing. You should keep doing that. It's uh, it's you gotta be positive and make it sound really euphonious. And you work in music, so you know what I'm talking about. It's really important that you're doing things like harmonizing with the music. So what key is your music in? Are <laughs> it's not like this. What key is your music in? Is your is your uh, are your coins hanging onto that key as well and chill in the same area. You can do different variations. They're all in the same key. And they're kind of, uh, you know, you can do something like if I pull it FL Studio and I pull in like, I don't know, a, like a, 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 let's do a harmless. I think it's harmless. It's a great little, yeah, child's play. This is a great little synth. You know, like little thirds, like open pitch. Isn't that nice? Little, little sound. Just quietly with some little like boop, boop, boop underneath it. That'd be great. But uh, 
as it's standing, it's still working, let's find out. Yeah. Um, as it is now, you've got pitch, what it sounds like pitch variation on the sounds, and it's like, ba -da 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 three osseo, <laughs> three os for life. It'd be cute. Let's hear this again. I need more. Let's go earlier on. It sure sounds like you've got pitch variation. I'm not sure if you do, or just the sound of it. But uh, late night FL crew, um, I, I, it sounds like you have pitch variation. Maybe you don't. But if you have variation in samples, they all gotta be in the same key. And these like, uh, so yeah, Sean. I never imagined a scenario before where someone watching you play a game would be like, "Please stop picking up coins." Yeah, coins are challenging, like a lot of coins at once in, in a row. It's a challenging sound to make, but at the very least, you gotta start by making sure they work together and they work in in uh, high frequency and they work with the music. So I'm gonna pop back out of here. I did that one first because Dan wouldn't shut up about it, but <laughs> we'll carry on. Um, one more thing, one more thing that we talk about a lot on, on Real Talk is panning. And with a game like this, a 2D side-scroller basically, it's a lot of scrolling, mind you, like up and down too, but regardless, getting things and hearing it only right channel is a bit weird when it's like right in front of you. So let's, let's have a listen to this. Hear that? That, that, bup, 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 bup. It's only a left channel, and there's a few things that are a little, little strange in that respect throughout the entire reel that are kind of panned only one side. So I would just say, Stephen, be aware of where your panning is. And if you're panning something hard left, it should be there for a reason. Like hard left is a sacred, sacred ground. So is hard right. So is center. And having something centralized to be, yes, it's right in front of you. That shin's right in front of you is really important. Otherwise, um, people might think there's something happening to the left, and there is not. And doing that kind of thing can be very, very useful as far as informing player behavior and saying, hey, look over to the left, there's something you should check out. But in this case, there's nothing there. It's only right in front of you, right? All right, so Matt says, missing flat sounds. I think somebody else said as well while, while I was playing that there seemed like a, there's a lot of missed opportunities. Like, you're seeing things, but we aren't hearing them. And I agree. Uh, music included makes me assume not enough ambience. Yes, uh, Matt is the more ambience guru. This guy always wants more ambience, and for good reason. In general, world building is a huge thing sound does, and ambience is a big part of that. And if there is a ton of music... Oh, yo, that landing too. You hear that? The Foley? The land and run is all left channel also. The shoot's working, it's pretty cool. That's tough for, for frequent sounds. All right, carrying on. Uh, this one. Uh, this one has, hear that pop? Pops happen when you stop sounds, though fade outs, and I would recommend you fade things out when you finish them. And also on all edits, if you edit sounds, always fade both sides. Otherwise, you're telling a speaker to go from, or the speaker head to go from a non-zero position, like over here, where the zero is here, to this position in zero time. So you're up, you're a pop when that happens. It's it's subtle here, but it's there. You hear it? And that kind of thing, it, it's, it comes off as amateur, and that's not a good thing. You don't want to come across as amateur. And no fully. This is it's a game jam thing, so again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna harp on you for missing things because you're probably under a deadline. But it goes back to the exact same conversation we had with Frida earlier on about having, you know, workshop VO demos versus having polished work you've done and you have had time to make sure it's polished and shows the full breadth of your capabilities. And jump on the board. This is cool having voice voice production here. This is really cool. Make your way up the stairs and jump on the it's kind of low in the mix, but it's there. Sure you will do this jumping sounds a bit abrasive for how often you're hearing it. But maybe it's supposed to be like a robot that's like like a like, hydraulic things popping out. I don't know. Uh, yes, thanks, Dan. Thank you for your contribution. 
Um, this is like all music, so if it's a sound design reel, a game audio show reel, just short is fine. I won't comment too much. It's probably doing its job as far as being atmospheric and add, adding to the vibe of the game. Not too worried about that one. This is also all music. It says, oh my god, is my side still off? Sorry. Side chain off. Um, music is still off. What's up, Bad Misty? Yo! Um, music is all I'm hearing. It says you did music and SFX, but... Yeah, I don't hear any SFX, so... This is pretty abrasive. Still here, Shala. What's up? Yeah, this eh, 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 it's pretty, pretty bold. It's pretty hard. So Brad says, would imagine showing any game with only one or two sounds wouldn't convince someone to hire you. Hell yeah. And Dan, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, Dan. <clears throat> so that's pretty, that's fine for the time being. Uh, so, so content quality, there's a lot of issues like in mix and in uh, amp, like lack of ambience and in um, missing sounds and in panning, in lack of fades. There's a lot of kind of very very baseline fundamental kind of uh, rookie mistakes, and that's fine because this demo reel tells me you're starting out, and that's totally fine. But those are the things that that would might uh, that might prevent you from getting uh, getting a gig because it's just attention to detail, and large studios want to know that you have that attention to detail when you come in. It's just it's something they want to know. Because the thing is, there's like that, again, that vast ocean of sound designers out there, and some will have that attention to detail and some won't, and who are you going to hire, right? How about the guy or the girl that has all the broad strokes and all the details t taken care of also, of course. <clears throat> so Matt says, focus seems to be music from what I heard, so that's what I'm going to think you're best at or want to do. Yeah. Because keep in mind, this reel is not only showing what you're good at, but it's showing what you want to do. And if you have a lot of music and not much sound design, then I'm going to think, oh, well, I'm hiring, hiring a sound designer. I shouldn't hire this guy because he does mostly music. Yeah? Thanks. <sighs> what, Jack? Settle down. I'm just staring at your, at your chat message. What's up, Jack Menhorn? That's Jack Menhorn. He's a audio designer working on Lawbreakers <clears throat> with uh, the one Cliffy B. Yeah, baby. For real. Yeah, baby. For real. What's up? Come on in here. Good to see you. It's been a little while. Uh, okay, so distinction. Yo, the one thing I said for distinction is you've got a lot of variety here. It's pretty cool. Pretty rad. You've got like Redesign, you've got the the game jam thing showing you do your own stuff in your of your own volition. You've got the UDK stuff, you've got the Google Play shipped title, that's the storybook, kind of a unique thing. You've got uh, this as well, you've like this kind of top down thing. You've got like there's a lot of different stuff here. And that's great. 2D roguelike, like or sorry, the rouge like. Um so that's really good. That that's serving you for sure. But I think that uh, what you've got is like a, a, a vast ocean of or not a vast ocean. I keep using that term. Sorry. You've, you've got a vast breadth of kinds of work, but unfortunately, it's all kind of uh, has small errors across the, the, all of it. So lots of like good broad stroke stuff, but the fact that details are missing is 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 not great. It's probably not going to help. Not going to help you very much. So that's that's where we ended up. Uh, so yeah, of course, Matt, ask, feel free to drop that link in the chat for your personal mentorship. And thank you again, Stephen O'Donnell, for your, your submission. I'm going to jump into the 